All right, y'all, today we're gonna be overclocking the Core i9-9900K that's inside of old Hotline 2 here. But wait, Kyle, haven't you already done that before? Yes, you're absolutely right. But this time around, we're gonna be overclocking the chip using Intel's Performance Maximizer Utility. It's an overclocking tool, one-click overclocking. It's completely automated from Intel. It's the first of its kind from Team Blue. So now I'm curious to see if Intel's Performance Maximizer, IPM, can beat my manual overclock Cinebench score. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bit of a showdown. And to make things even more interesting, we we have a pretty nice golden sample here. This 9900K, I mean, is, is silicon lottery material for the most part. I was able to get five gigahertz on all eight cores at just 1.23 volts. Definitely on the low end in terms of voltages for five gigahertz flat. So I'm excited about that. We'll see what IPM can do. It's also worth pointing out that with the launch of this new application, Intel's also revamped their, what is it called? The Performance Tuning Protection Program. Now you have the option to pay a $20 premium, which protects your CPU in the event that it dies from overclocking. You can send it into Intel, they'll send you a brand new one, as long as the processor is still under the standard product warranty. Additionally, this is only good for one failure. Your CPU can only die once. It's, it's kind of a one-time deal. And finally, the program itself is right now only supporting six different Intel SKUs. So you've got the 9600K, 9700K, 9900K, and all of their KF versions. So six chips in total will probably be rolling out support for additional CPUs in the future, but I, I don't know if that's confirmed yet. For now, let's go ahead and, and fire up the, uh, the i PM and we'll we'll get overclocking. All right, so I'm just gonna fire it up. I've already installed it on my desktop. I have never launched this program before, guys. I'm saving my I'm saving my first time for you. You should feel special. All right, so here it is, Intel Performance Maximizer. Okay, okay, I agree that I could potentially fry my chip. Apparently this program creates a 16 gigabyte partition on your drive so that it can store whatever data it needs to set your auto overclock. So uh, we do have enough storage. Yes, I'm gonna shrink the partition. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how long this is all gonna take, so I might have to do some editing magic. And I guess while we're waiting here, uh, it's, it's worth pointing out that it says it's an overclocking or it's an automated overclocking utility, but uh, there's quite a few requirements that need to be set in the BIOS in order for this application to work properly. For example, you need Turbo Boost enabled, Speed Step I think has to be on, UEFI mode has to be on for, for the BIOS, and there's like three or four other things. So I feel like a lot of people might already have all those settings good to go by default and they won't have to fiddle with anything. If not, you still kind of have to jump into the BIOS and, and tweak those settings and uh, I feel like a, an automated overclocking utility like this isn't really meant for the diehard enthusiast. It's meant for people who might not be as familiar or comfortable comfortable with entering a UEFI and uh, you know messing around with that. So just something to be aware of if this is your, let's say your first build and you're thinking, oh, it's really just a, a no brainer one click thing. There might be some additional assembly required. Okay, I think the partition's been created. It looks like we're ready to go here. It says ready, and there's gonna be some test run on the system. It's gonna need to reboot several times, and it could take several hours. Holy crap, okay. So this is maybe something that I'll have to come back to in the morning, because uh, it's, it's fairly late right now. These tests may fail, or your system may not reach the maximum overclock frequency if the BIOS settings haven't been changed to their default values, which they have. Auto overclocking settings are enabled in BIOS, which they're not. Another overclocking application has altered your system's frequency. All good there. Please select continue to run tests now. Oops, wait, that's that's a little counterintuitive Intel because there's also a pop-up here that says, are you sure you wanna reboot your system to run these tests? Uh, yeah, yeah I do, okay. It, my, my computer, Hotline 2 is in your hands now, Intel. Don't, don't f*** this up. Aha, look, it's doing things. Uh, at this point, I have no idea how long this process is gonna take. It could take several hours, it could take less than an hour, but it's getting pretty late. So I'm gonna go to bed and tomorrow morning, I'll hopefully wake up to a nice stable overclock and we'll take it from there. <gasps> okay. All right, so next morning now. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I came back to this. It looks like our test results are ready to view. Yay, I'm glad everything went well. Looks like everything was set right in the BIOS. I'm just gonna click continue. Okay, and hopefully it'll spit out. Oh, wait, what? Okay. All right, so 4.9 gigahertz. And it looks like it was increased about 200 megahertz from, from 4.7. So right out of the gate, my manual overclock was 100 megahertz higher at five gigahertz flat. But let's just see how this overclock performs. I'm gonna load up Cinebench, and this way we can also get a score to compare against my manual OC. I'm also gonna open up Hardware Info 64. So I'm gonna be looking at voltage, clock speed, and temperatures while this is going on. You can see right here, just as we're idling, we're hitting around four point, a little over 4.7 gigahertz. So not quite at 4.9, although it is spiking up to 4.8, as you can see there. Let's see what happens when we click run. Okay. 
Ah, our clock speed's at 4.7 still. We're not hitting 4.9 at all. Temperatures are in the 70s. It's a little higher actually than my manual OC. The vid is around 1.27, 1.28. But yeah, we're not we're not actually hitting the uh, suggested frequency and we're done. So, uh, okay, that's that's some interesting behavior there that I think is a little, a little disappointing, but let's see how the performance looks. All right, so starting with Cinebench R20 in the multi-threaded test, you can see that I not only tested my manual overclock at five gigahertz and Intel Performance Maximizer, but uh, also the system just running bone stock, that's the, the bottom graph there, or the bottom bar there, uh, as well as with multi-core enhancement enabled. If you're not familiar with MCE, it's basically like a pre-overclock or like a factory overclock set by the motherboard manufacturer. Uh, they don't actually dial in a specific clock speed, but rather they uh, allow the, the CPU to operate outside of Intel specifications. So um, you will potentially see variance between different motherboard manufacturers based on how they actually configure their own MCE. Sometimes it's not even called MCE, it's under a different name depending on the motherboard uh, vendor that you're using. But it's basically a factory overclock. A lot of board vendors are just enabling it by default, like right out of the box. So I felt it was an important uh, piece of data to include in today's tests. With that said, you can see our results here with the stock score getting 4,390 points. That's our baseline. Our manual overclock was uh, able to actually pump out 5,123 points. That's a 17% uplift over stock. Not too shabby. Intel Performance Maximizer did well here too, getting 4,918 points. That's a 12% performance bump over stock. And MCE actually beat out IPM. It got fairly close to my, my personal overclock actually, getting 5,017 points. That's a 14% uplift over stock. So again, your mileage may vary with MCE depending on the motherboard uh, that you're using. And the Maximus 11 Extreme that we're using today being a very top tier high-end motherboard, I would assume that uh, its MCE parameters are a bit more aggressive than you might find on an entry level uh, or budget board. Moving on to Premiere Pro, this is a rendering test. We had a 10 minute clip at 1080p, 60fps, H.264. This is basically showing the time that it took to render that clip. Uh, with the given settings. So the time's measured in seconds. Lower is better here, of course. At the very bottom, you can see our stock system was able to render it out in 472 seconds. With my manual overclock, we actually rendered it out 8% faster uh, with 435 seconds on the clock. IPM did not do very well here. In fact, it actually performed worse than stock, taking 3.4% longer to render the clip. Not exactly sure what happened here or why, why that is, um, but I, I ran the test multiple times and this was the result. MCE coming in hot, getting a score of 435 seconds that ties my manual overclock five gigahertz score. So clearly we can see that Asus has dialed in a fairly aggressive tuning uh, for their multi-core enhancement on this specific board. Now moving on to gaming, I only tested two titles here because this isn't a super deep dive video. It's more or less a first look at IPM. Uh, but here we have GTA 5 at 1080p, max settings across the board with 2X MSAA. And you can see here that both our manual overclock and multi-core enhancement uh, were able to score a modest uplift over stock, going from 98 frames per second on average to about 102, 103. That's, that's about a four or 5% bump in performance. IPM, once again, uh, was it fell short of stock performance. For some reason, I tested this again multiple times, it was repeatable, and we actually went down a couple frames. Uh, that was both on average frame rates and 1% lows, so I, I, that's actually why I decided to test a second game. It was just gonna be one game initially, but then I tested Metro Last Light to see if, if that was repeatable, and sure enough, uh, IPM fared worse. It fared worse than stock, with no multi-core enhancement enabled. We went from 162 frames to 159 frames per second. We saw a really nice performance improvement with our manual overclock and with MCE enabled, both of which rendered about 8% more frames on average than our bone stock system. So IPM doesn't seem to be doing us any favors in gaming. In fact, it's actually hurting our performance compared to a bone stock system. Um, it did do nicely in Cinebench R20. Again, that 12% bump is really nice, but at the same time, IPM performed worse than our stock system in Premiere Pro. So it makes it really difficult for me to know how and where and when to recommend this program because the, the data is just so all over the place. It's very inconsistent, not exactly sure if that's just something that Intel needs to refine over time, but as of now, this doesn't look like the best way to go if you're trying to overclock your CPU, at least in my experience. So summing this quick little video up, I would say that manually overclocking your CPU is the most consistent and best performing uh, way to overclock your CPU. IPM, for now, 
is not a program that I could recommend just because the data is showing me that it's actually hurting performance in a lot of cases. And until I either do more research or there's more information out on it, I can't necessarily suggest that anyone um, use this as their primary form of overclocking. MCE is sort of a wild card because it varies from motherboard to motherboard. In our case, it actually performed more or less on par with my manual overclock in a lot of tests, which is very impressive. Of course, I have a very high tier motherboard um, that uh, has a more aggressive tuning probably. MCE has also been the topic of some controversy here and there because uh, of just the way it operates, the way that motherboard manufacturers kind of sneakily throw it into their BIOS and enable it by default right out of the box. So users are uh, reporting things like, you know, VRM throttling or their cooling solution not being able to handle the pre-overclock because they're, they're just not aware that it's going on. They don't know what it is. So I feel like there's uh, a lack of transparency with MCE, even though it can be used effectively and, and properly and actually give you some really nice results. So uh, do some research on it, find out how it operates with your specific motherboard if you do plan to use it and, uh, and, and good luck. Um, maybe I'll report more or do a video on it specifically in the near future. But guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for me. If you guys have any experience with IPM so far, granted, if you meet the very specific uh, hardware criteria to actually use it, feel free to share your experience down below. I hope you guys fared better than I did today. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next video.